And one of the things that I put on the PowerPoint is to make sure that you're keeping up with your reading. Um, if you haven't read through chapters uh, 7 and 8 so far, that is probably the next thing that you need to be doing. Wow, that's really bright, isn't it? Um, and then uh, we're going to get into chapter 9 today. And uh, we still have, I think, two more weeks before we even get to a test. So um, make sure that you are keeping up with that reading. Uh, the last time that we were in here, we talked a little bit about uh, geographic patterns and species distribution. So basically how different types of organisms are found in different places around the world. And there are similar species uh, that live in very different habitats and very uh, different habitats that have similar species. And that depends on the evolutionary history of those populations. So um, one of the other ways that we look at the evolutionary uh, similarities between organisms is in embryology. And so I talked about this last time uh, where we're talking about the embryos, what's found inside of the eggs. And so if you look at a shark, uh, a shark has a bony tail and it's got gill pouches uh, when it's inside of the, the egg. Uh, we've got a turtle who's got the bony tail, and it's got gill pouches. Even though it will eventually develop lungs, it doesn't even have uh, doesn't even have gills. Go back. Uh, we've got humans who have uh, the gill pouches and a bony tail. And as you all know by looking around, none of us have gills and none of us have tails. Um, and a chicken has uh, gill pouches and tails. So those things are not what they ultimately end up with, but uh, they do show that we have similar evolutionary origins. Uh, another thing that we discussed is uh, homologous structures. Homologous meaning uh, the same type of structures. So if you look at the human arm, uh, human, come on in. Good. Hopefully I'm going to have enough room for everybody. If I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry. Uh, homologous bone structures. So in the, um, in the arm bones, uh, a human has a fairly long humerus. If you look at the, uh, at the bones of the horse, uh, they've got a fairly short humerus uh, up there in the muscular part. Um, we've got our radius and our ulna, which goes through our forearm. It's a little bit longer in a horse. If you look at the bat, they're a lot thinner because a bat is obviously going to be a lot lighter and is going to use its uh, four limbs for a different, different purpose. And if we look at the porpoise, it's got a very different structure, but it's still got the same bones. And so what all of these four things have in common is they have similar bone structures, but they do very different things with them. So uh, humans, because we walk upright and we use our arms for grasping things, uh, our uh, bones are situated the way that they are. Uh, we could never run the way a horse does on its four limbs. Um, so it's developed a, a little bit of a different use. A uh, bat, throughout the bat wings, has the same bone structures, but in a little bit of a different pattern so that it can fly and the porpoise so that it can glide through the water. So they have similar bone structures and uh, at one point, millions and millions of years ago, we may have come from a common ancestor. So uh, inside of you, inside of the human appendix, uh, inside of each human, each one of us has an appendix and if you've ever had your appendix taken out, then uh, you know that nothing really changes from when you, when you uh, had it to when you don't have it. Uh, and so since it, it uh, has no function, why do we still have an appendix? And so um, this is an example of a homologous structure. You don't have to write all this down. I was just going to see how small it could get where I would still be able to read what it said. Um, so a uh, human appendix is a uh, homologous structure that has no function. So evolutionarily, back maybe uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, uh, it may have served some purpose. So 
Uh, if you think about a, uh, the, of the great apes, like the uh, chimpanzees or the gorillas, they use the appendix because the primary thing that they eat is plants. So since they eat so many plants, the appendix helps in digesting all of that cellulose. And since uh, we have uh, gone on to cook our food, and we've been cooking our food for thousands of years, um, we don't use the, the appendix anymore. So uh, some of the other things that are included in those categories of vestigial structures, which means uh, something that's left over uh, evolutionarily, are things like the molars in vampire bats. So imagine you're a vampire bat, the only thing you eat is a liquefied diet. Why would you have the molars so that you could crunch and chew your food uh, even though they, they uh, eat a completely liquid diet? Or if you've ever seen uh, cave-dwelling fish, they're often albino white, and they've got eye sockets, but they've got no eyes. And uh, it's because if you live your entire life in the dark, then uh, forming eyes just takes extra energy from your system that uh, you don't want to put into, uh, put into eyes. And so they've got eye sockets, but they don't, uh, they don't even have eyes in those sockets. Or if you look at a whale, like if you think of a killer whale, uh, they actually have pelvic bones uh, where they would have had legs attached, but they don't have legs. Um, so what that points to is a common ancestor back uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago. So the appendix is something that is found in humans uh, that we don't use anymore and that really only causes problems. The interesting thing about the appendix is, I was reading an article about uh, when you're going to be a uh, person that goes up into outer space, an astronaut who goes to live on the space station, they'll take your appendix out before you go up so that, uh, because if you were to go up into the space station, there's no way to do surgery on you to uh, get your appendix out if your appendix ruptures. So they take it out preventatively before they send anybody into outer space. I think that's really interesting that they can just take it out and it doesn't change the way that these um, astronauts are able to function.